Hello. This is part two uh, in our technical overview of COBOL.run. In this video, we're going to discuss uh, a little bit more about how the Node.js middleware integrates with uh, the COBOL application and the OpenWhisk API. Here I have open the Docker file. So this is the, about the simplest Docker file you can get. Uh, it, it inherits from GNU COBOL uh, image that we set up. We're using GNU COBOL, but if you have your own compiler or if you have a license to some compiler, you can modify this container and uh, use your own compiler and deploy the service uh, exactly the same way as any other COBOL.run app. Um, but with uh, with a different compiler if you want. We're using GNU COBOL just because it's convenient, it's free, and uh, it's easy to set up. All this container does is it installs Node. It uh, runs npm install, which in Node land uh, will install all of our applications dependencies. And then uh, to start the container, you run npm start. Easy enough. We're going to do a, a deep dive here at least deeper than the first video, uh, into the Node.js middleware code and give you a sense of what actually is going on there and how the mechanics work um, behind the scenes. This controller, this OpenWish controller, is uh, invoked by the OpenWisk API. Uh, OpenWisk defines two methods that you need to implement in order to uh, be able to talk with OpenWisk init uh, and run. Init uh, will check any necessary preconditions for uh, the container and run will actually invoke your OpenWhisk action. Um, in this case, since we're using OpenWhisk with a custom container, um, it's going to send a request to the run endpoint of our application and uh, run, in our case, is just going to call run in our backend um, OpenWhisk service. So our implementation here, we call two methods. One, we write files, COBOL service .write files. What this does is it takes any input files that you want to pass into the service as arguments to your COBOL app, and it writes them to temporary uh, storage so that your COBOL app can find them. So if you have um, you know, some sort of data files um, or other things that your COBOL app relies on during runtime, you can write those into its environment and then it, it'll be able to find them during runtime. Second step we do is compile and run. So I'll uh, walk through this code really quickly. It's really simple. The COBOL.run service is really simple. Um, this COBOL service uh, class here, this, this essentially forms the runtime environment of your COBOL app. So when you deploy your COBOL program to the service and you're migrating it either off of some other server, off of the mainframe possibly, off of some like dust, dusty beige box that's un under somebody's desk, uh, you, you know, getting it into the cloud. This is this is always going to be a good idea. Uh, you have by by cloning um, or forking this repository and modifying either the Docker file or this middleware, you can define your own COBOL environment. Um, you know, COBOL has a lot of different compilers, a lot of different runtimes, and you can either modify this, this environment to match what you have, or you can extend it to add additional features that may be unique to your situation. This co compile and run method here, uh, it is essentially spawning the COBOL app as a separate process um, from the Node.js runtime. It's uh, pretty straightforward here. We're spawning a process. We're passing in any of the arguments. So you, when you uh, invoke your COBOL application, any arguments that are sent with the HTTP request 
will be forwarded through to the COBOL app that's uh, process that's spawned here. Um, and this includes file inputs, it includes compiler flags, anything you, uh, anything you want to send, you can pass uh, through here. So when the program is finished executing, we uh, return control back to the, contr the OpenWISC controller, we resolve uh, the promise, we send it the output, the, out the OpenWISC controller will um, parse that output into a JSON object, and then you get the result that uh, we demonstrated in the first part of this video. Fairly straightforward. Uh, there's, there's really not much to this. So you can get in here and modify this code yourself and um, make, make customizations pretty, uh, pretty easily. There's, there's documentation going up on the GitHub page. Uh, there's more information you can find on Docker Hub about both GNU COBOL and uh, COBOL.run. And on our GitHub page for this, this project, more COBOL slash COBOL.run. Um, we're adding diagrams and documentation and videos all the time, so um, check that out if, uh, if you haven't seen the project on GitHub yet. Thanks, everyone, and let me know in the comments what you want to see next. We'll be posting more videos uh, as time goes on. Thanks.